it's dramatically different, right? You still want to give the exact same functionality to the user, enable your application and the business value that you bring with your application, but as you move from one device to another, no, no, as you move from one shape to another, you want to make sure that you're delivering similar value, but in a, in a, in a look and feel UI that's, um, that's relevant and appropriate for the form factor and size. Yeah, I mean, you really want to obsess about getting the best possible user experience for your app uh, on whatever device the user is picking up to use it. Yeah. So when you are des developing your application, no, no, when you are designing your application, you want to think about maybe three tranches. So uh, take a look at this. So here are three major pieces you might look at it for your application. The first one would be your phone, and then we're going horizontally, then to your tablet, and then to the laptop. And each of those might have a slightly different overall UI. You might remove some functionality in the phone because it maybe it's not appropriate, or maybe it's not relevant, or maybe because it just doesn't fit in a form factor that small. Then we have the tablet, then we have the laptop. So those might be where we separate by views. But then we also have this idea of, of tailoring to subtleties and aspect ratio inside that same uh, family, that device family. Yeah. And so maybe that's where the visual state comes in. Yeah, and so it's, it's a case of looking beyond the idea of just, it's not just about scaling your content up to a, fit a bigger screen. You've got to think a bit more than that and say, how, how, do I, how do I kind of really adapt my UI to give a great user experience? Like you say, some things may disappear, some bits mm -hmm. may g scroll in a different direction. Uh, you want to make sure that the user's getting the best possible utility from your app. Uh, and uh, we need to be a bit smart about doing that. And uh, like you say, visual states is a great way saying, OK, if we're portrait on a small screen, do this. Landscape on a bigger screen, do that. So this is, this is where we're at. So these are all things that you have in your toolbox that you can use. But as a developer, you get to choose what you use and what you don't use. And just like Andy said, what we want to happen is for our application to adapt to all the different pieces. But nobody's going to make you do it. And the reality is we know this. Users love apps that are great on all their devices. And I think the, the inverse might, or the converse here, might yeah. be true as well. You know, users hate apps that look terrible and don't work well on their devices. There's just no getting around it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes, well, you know, who, who cares? That's exactly. The, <laughs> the truth is users love apps that are just done right. All right. Um, so consider this. So this is the a fleet or family of layout controls that we have for Windows XAML. We have the grid, the stack panel canvas, things that you know and love and use already for laying out. But now we have a new member, and that's the relative panel. So the relative panel still inherits from panel, just like all these others. but it it lays its children out in a special way. The relative panel arranges the children by declaring the relationships between the children. It's very interesting, and we'll talk that through in just a second so you get a feel for it. But I think what's going to happen is developers are going to start using the relative panel more and more and more because it's such an easy way to lay out your UI. And probably most important, it's such a simple uh, XAML tree when you're done. You know, it used to be you would nest all these stack panels, nest all these grids, do all these different things to make sure that your UI laid out the way it was. Even right now, I could look at a UI and tell you there's a stack panel, there's a grid, probably a canvas, there's a column, there's a row, that, and I can lay it out in my mind. The problem is, all of those layout controls are nested and then nested and then nested. That's a parsing issue, that's a layout issue, there's all kinds of considerations yeah. around that. And it's kind of ugly, to be honest. You know, well, uh, you see, it can be. From a developer's point of view, it's definitely ugly when you look at it. You know, <laughs> yeah. you got to really have a clear focus to be able yeah. to figure out why something's right or wrong. But probably even more importantly, it's also difficult to change. So if I need to make my application adaptable so that it changes whenever it gets more narrow or something else like that, how do I do it? What do I add another column and then hide yeah. that column, hide show that column? I'm sure we've all created XAML layouts where you have, you're setting up, you know, you kind of have grids and you have columns that are sort of empty in, in one orientation and then you you have the you, you get into the size changed event on the because the user switched to a different orientation and then you're you're manually encode moving items from one cell of your grid yeah. to another one. You know, it works, but it's Well, it's it, also the only option we really had before. Exactly. And so now we have let's take a look at the syntax. So this is the syntax for the relative panel. So just like any panel, you just wrap your children with it. But once you have it, there's this special attached property that all of the children now get. And so it's relative panel dot, and then there's a lot of options from here. In this case, I'm saying 
So the top one is the red rectangle. And so I am making the red rectangle align horizontal center with panel true. Right, so that's making it centered horizontally. And then I can also make it um, vertically centered with the panel. So this isn't actually relating to, the ch to the another sibling child. This is related to the overall panel. So, so this is me saying center it, right? Yep. Easy enough. Yep, yep. straightforward. And so uh, here are all the ways I can position with the panel. So I could, left, I could align the left of the object with the panel, the right of the object with the panel, top, bottom, and then these two middles that we were talking about as well. Okay. I can put it anywhere. So these are the nine places we can put it by default, and then we can start to nudge those around with other properties that we have as well. So take a look at this. Um, align with a sibling. So now I really want to see a child. So I have the blue and the red together. And I want to put that red over to the right. So I can say relative panel dot right of. And it's right of what? It's right of the blue rectangle. And so now wherever that blue rectangle moves to, the red rectangle will follow because it's not positioned based on the panel, it's positioned based on the blue rectangle and anything else that might be associated to it. And then I also can align it vertically to make sure it's centered. So I could bring it down to the bottom, top, or centered, whichever I want as well. All right, so here I've done it and I've, I've just switched a few of those properties. And Hopefully it's starting to make sense. Look how simple this XAML remains, and I've moved them around already. If you think about this as far as adaptive layout, I'm able to change just two properties and something moves to another location. In this case, I'll say it's below the blue rectangle, but it's, it's aligned the right with the blue rectangle, so now over to the right. I could do the same thing where now I'm centering it with the blue rectangle, and then I, of course I could do the same where I'm to the left of the blue rectangle as well. So the left side is aligned to the left side of the blue rectangle is the idea there. So I can move things around very easily and meanwhile I'm maintaining a very simple XAML tree, very simple XAML syntax as well. It's really beautiful. I mean in its own way and I'm surprised we haven't had this before. It's a, it's a nice control. Okay, so here are the things I can do with uh, as far as sibling positions. So there's two things I can do here. I can both position and align. So these are just the position options. I can go, I mean, these are the four options you expect, right? Top, right, left, bottom. And so I can go above, right of, below, and right of. <laughs> of course, I mean left of there. Yeah, I'm, I'm fixing that right now. Of. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> that is left of. Look, I've got an overlay image that's about to appear. <laughs> all right, or left of the blue rectangle. Ah, we've gone all full, full circle. Hey, just like this. So there's the blue rectangle in the middle, and the red rectangle could go all the way around. That's more like it, all the way. Okay, so that was the first as far as positioning. Now we get to align it. So do I want to align the top? Do I want to align it with the bottom? Or do I want to go right in the center? This gives me all the options, both vertically and horizontally. And so all four I can do. So it doesn't make sense really just to do one or just to do the other. And what's also interesting about this, Andy, is you can do, you can, you can make it to the right of one object, but you can align it with another object, mm -hmm. right? And so it's really interesting as you start kind to puzzling. figure out where you want things to go. It's kind of, you need to play with this, and then it'll, it'll, it, it seems more complicated than it really is. I mean, I see, you know, align top with, and, and I look at it first, align top with, and what, what does that mean? What it means right. is align tops. Yes with a sibling. So yes. you align the tops of object A with object B. And you know That's you just right. have to kind of then you go, oh okay, I'll get it. Well it's worth remembering this is the Windows 10 preview. There are several things that aren't fully completed in the tooling. So we don't see the full design time experience with this control yet. But no. once that rolls out, I think this will just be a natural way to design a user interface. Sure. And these things where we're like, well align top Eventually, that will be a. We don't. We won't even think of the yeah, syntax. We'll think of what the designer it's, does. It's exactly. It's fair to say at the moment you can't sort of drag and drop things around in relative panel in the designer and it making sense. So you can't. You have to think about what the XAML syntax means a bit more than you will do later on when we've got a bit more tooling. So this is, as Jerry says, this is a technical preview. So. We're yeah. building the, the plane as we're flying it. So. so these are our six alignment options that we have. We can lay them out all the way around. So this allows us to go top, bottom, middle, left, right, middle, whichever it is that's most appropriate for you. And then, of course, I could add translations to this. I could add margins to this. I, I mean, it's just XAML. I could add all the stuff that XAML allows me to do to tweak that if it's not exactly where I want it to be. So pretty nice. Like I said before, alignment and positioning don't have to be on the same element, and so it can start to become really sophisticated. Of course, you know your UI, I don't know your UI. That may be appropriate, and that may not be appropriate. So it's really up to you overall. I think it's going to be easiest if I just show you this. Yep. So uh, let me pull up the uh, relative panel and, uh, and do a quick demo. 
All right, so I'm going to start here in, um, I have uh, template 10 open here, and so I'll start with just the main page, and we'll start adding a relative panel. So you can see, I'll keep everything as simple as possible, just know it can be as sophisticated as you want it to be. So uh, I'll put a single rectangle, we'll make it height and width of 100, and I'll make it red. And so now, its default location is top left, because I didn't specify where it should belong. So let's start by setting those, um, those, pro those attached properties. So we'll go in, and the first one we'll set is um, relative panel dot, and then what we'll do is we'll start to center it. So I'll do a horizontal center, and then I'll also do here a align vertical center, right? So they're both marked as true, and I'll run it, and you can see it's just like, it's just centering it. So right. nothing too sophisticated yet, but this is obviously something you're going to need to start with. Okay. So I've got my red uh, rectangle in the center. I'm going to create a green rectangle that we can play with now that um, we can move around as well. So uh, first thing I'll say is I'm going to align the top, but with the panel. So this might be important for where the alignment goes with it. So this is, instead of being centered, I can align it to the top. And then, this will be interesting, let, let's align left with the panel as well. And so this is the same as the default implementation. So this would be the same as not putting anything at all. I should still have the red in the middle, but now I should have the green over on the left. Right? So now I can start to manipulate it um, with uh, different properties. So let's do that. All right, I'll stop it. And uh, instead of left here, I'm going to align it here to the right. So now it's top with panel and right with panel. So now we shouldn't see any change in the red, but now it's jumped over to the right. And I can keep on doing that in any of the nine immediate positions that I can have inside the panel. All right, now let's make it so that I relate them together. So we'll give a name because I have to reference it by name. So I'll give a name to the red rectangle, and I'll change it to being referenced to the panel to being above the red rectangle. Now this is, gives me the opportunity to change the horizontal alignment. So I'll just simply center it with the red rectangle so their centers are on the same line. So now when I run it, what you should see is the red in the middle, here we go, and the green right above it, and they're centered perfectly with each other. Since they're the same size, uh, actually aligning left would have done the same thing. But um, th that, that part doesn't matter. All right, now I'm going to move it. Now it's going to go to the right. It's no longer, horizontal doesn't make sense here. Now what makes sense is vertical. So basically, now it, we should see the red still in the center. The green is hopped over to the right. What's amazing about this is anything that was related to the green at the time would have followed the green around as it moved. Um, OK, so I'm going to change it. So now the red, I'm going to move that red around and because I, I want you to see that the green rectangle follows it. So I'm going to move it so now the red is no longer horizontally centered, but it's left of it. And as soon as it goes left, of course, the green is relative to the red, so it follows it over to the side. And I'll show you something really funny here. So I have um, a line left with panel right now, but if I change left here to a line right, right, something kind of crazy is going to happen. Um, the, the red rectangle does align its right edge with the panel, but look where the green is. Uh -huh. Well, the reality is it's right there, it's just off the panel, but because I'm aligning them in a way that actually hides it, I can move it right off the panel, and now I don't see it anymore. So there's something that developers need, and designers need to think through here. If they're moving things around, what's related to that as it moves around? You can, you can, you can position things right off the panel. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, so, but it's beautiful at the same time because I can move one element if it needs to and all the things will move with it. But probably most important is I can adjust the relationships with a single property and I don't have to worry about whether or not I've got enough columns in this grid. I don't have to worry about whether or not the stack panel's orientation is correct. Right? None of that even matters anymore. Now I just set up all the relationships of the children. Right? So anyway, so this is the warning to you. You really can position items right off the screen. Which you might be going in, tinker, tinker, tinker. You look at your application, and you're like, where's all my UI? <laughs> <laughs> you might have just mistakenly put it right off the screen. All right, so the first thing that we know we get as a benefit from the, um, from the relative panel is that it simplifies adaptability, right? When I need to rearrange something, this is a pretty complex scenario. When I need to rearrange like this, it's not a, just a matter of turning it or flipping it or rotating it, because that would also rotate the contents. That's not what I want to do. I need to move their actual location. All I have to do is set their relative location to each other to be different, and they all move. If I were trying to do this today in a grid, I've really got to manipulate things around. Hopefully, I've got enough rows. 
I've got to think that through. Then I've got empty rows, unless they do it, and it's oh, yeah. it, all this complexity you just don't need. Yeah. So this really simplifies adaptability, but look at this. It really simplifies the visual tree, right? Look at, on the left is kind of a classic scenario. It's a stack panel of stack panels, and maybe the orientation switches for some or whatever. It doesn't matter, but this is how it's laid out. This exact same UI then can be accomplished with a relative panel and just the four text blocks. That's much, much more concise, much cleaner. Yeah. Especially from the rendering engine. Because yeah. the rendering engine can parse this so much quicker and start to apply so you it. You get a perf advantage as well. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. It is pretty neat, no yeah. doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. Another benefit that you get uh, kind of as a freebie out of the box here is that your visual state is also uh, simplified. Instead of moving things yeah. around, changing their column span, changing their row span or their column number, or changing the orientation of a stack panel, all these things that you could or couldn't do, now it's just a single property or two properties that you might change so that things move as related to the other items. And depending on how you have things, the relationships stacked, you might just be moving two items and you know a dozen things behind them follow. Yeah, and this is this is the real power of this. The, this is a, you know it's not about moving colored squares around the screen, is it? It's about making the yeah. your UI adapt nicely to different sizes of uh, of uh, device screen uh, to different orientations in a really easy, simple kind of a way. So we talked about the strategy that you have for adapting your application, right? One of it is just the design strategy of let make, make sure things aren't fixed size and all these things that we've learned from web development. We also have the idea of these changes in visual states and setters and adaptive triggers that are coming along. We also have this idea of views that we can 